So this is an approach into Da Nang where the profile was mismanaged and we'll have a look to see exactly what went wrong. So at the moment we, are, we just passed flight level 140, the speed bug is selected at 300 knots and we are in descent mode. So the, speed, the aircraft will start to raise the nose to reduce speed a bit and after that it will start to try to follow the path. So let's do a profile cal calculation. Now the, it's a bit hard to see here but we, are, we just passed 80 miles and anytime you are further than 50 miles your profile calculation might not quite add up. But the other thing you have to watch out for is of course shortcuts. So here the arrival, it goes into a zigzag pattern and there is no traffic on the ND. So that is a clue that you might get a shortcut. The other thing is the radio. You can listen uh, to the radio to to uh, uh, see if it's any if, if it's busy or not or if other aircraft get a shortcut. All these things are clues. So I think we, we might get a shortcut here. So the the distance you should use instead of the uh, FMS uh, distance here is something from the navigation display. Now there's several ways to do that. You can just count the range arc. So there's 30 miles and there's 40 miles. Um, you can't see it quite quite yet here. But um, the other thing is you can use the VOR distance. So it says 52 miles to the VOR. Uh, things to a few things to uh, keep in mind when you do that. The VOR is rarely exactly at the threshold. And the other thing is that this is a distance straight from your aircraft to the airfield here. And that's rarely what you, this is never what you do. So you will always fly a bit of a leg to there and then to there. So the actual distance will be a little bit uh, more. But it will, for a quick calculation at least, it will give you some idea. So let's take uh, 50 miles just to see if, if we are reasonably close to the profile. So 50 miles times 3, so that's fly level 150. We are doing uh, near 300 knots, so that we should fly 3000 feet uh, lower. Uh, so we should be at fly level 120. Now we're not uh, quite there yet, uh, and uh, again we should uh, really add a bit more miles, but we can see that we are not that far off. Okay, so, so far it seems to be okay, perhaps, yeah, maybe a little bit high, but uh, it, it's a little, it, we cannot see exactly how we're doing on profile because we don't have an exact, exact distance yet. So now the speed is reduced to 250. Okay, that I would say that's a bit early. You want to reduce the speed um, about a thousand feet above fly level 100, where your speed has to uh, be below, uh, be 250. Uh, below uh, fly level 100 and if you start to reduce speed too early you can end up high okay now here's our shortcut okay so now we know uh, exactly how, what distance we have so it says here 54 miles okay so let's do the calculation again for 50 miles so 50 times 3 fly level 150 300 knots so 3000 feet lower we should be at fly level 120 okay so now we can see we might be a bit high. We are 53 miles now. You, you, for a, a quick calculation, you, you you can do three miles is a thousand feet. So, um, oh, actually that that's not too far off. So that's 52 miles. Well, maybe you're a little bit high. Um, I can skip ahead a little bit to see exactly. So 51 miles. So we should be at flight 120 and 50 miles. Okay, so we're 700 feet too high. No, not too bad. It's okay. We can have a look at the wind, a little bit tailwind, and the weight is 60.5 tons, so that's normal. So, yeah, okay, so we're 700 feet high. Now, this may or may not be a problem at 50 miles, depending, uh, maybe you get a little bit of headwind, but in general, this will not change much. So, if you're uh, 700 feet high at 50 miles, you'll be 700 feet high over the threshold, which, of course, you can't do. So, at some point, you need to start fixing that. How to fix that? When you're very far away, more than 80 miles, then you can um, do open send speed up, for, and, but that will take a lot of time which is why it only works if you're far away. But if, you've, if you're closer to the airfield, you will need drag uh, in a different way, which is in this case, the speed brakes. Okay, now the other thing is like, okay, we got a shortcut to tr from Traco to cut us here. But uh, do you think that we might get another shortcut from Traco to Tamala perhaps, or Monterey or Virat, Virai? 
Uh, it, it could be possible. It's something you have to keep in mind. So if, if you're already 700 feet high and you might get another shortcut, you'll definitely, I would definitely um, put the aircraft on profile. Okay, so let's continue. So now we're slowing down to uh, 250, again, a little bit early, but okay. Okay, so now the, the vertical speed is, uh, vertical speed mode here is selected. Presumably because the first officer saw, okay, I'm approaching flight level 110, but this is generally not what you want to do. Because if you if you do this, then you risk uh, getting higher on profile. And if the speed bug is higher than your current speed, the aircraft will increase power and that is not what you want either. Uh, unless there's traffic below and you have a high rate of descent, you, you don't want to go into vertical speed mode. Okay, so let's skip ahead a bit. So let's see, so here, we pass, we're approaching Traco, and uh, let's do another profile calculation. So at, here we are at 41 miles, so 40 times three. So that's flat of a wall 120, and we're doing 250 knots. So we should be at uh, nine, uh, no, uh, flat of a 100. Okay, so it's, it, we, okay, we're not quite there yet with 41 miles, so we're going to wait until we are at 40 miles, which is right now. And again, uh, you can see that we're still the same amount high, well, a little bit higher in, in, than before. We're 800 feet high. So, and at that moment, okay, now you're 40 miles away, I would apply the speed brake to, to fix that. But that's not done. Okay, so let's continue the video. So, okay, flying a little bit further. And here you can see we get another shortcut. Aha, now this is, should be a clue straight away. If you calculated your profile before and you knew you were 700 or 800 feet high, you don't need you to do your profile calculation now because you know for sure that you will be high. Okay, but anyway, let's calculate. So 32 miles times three. So um, that'll be 9,000 feet and we're doing 250 knots. So we should be 2,000 feet lower. So we should be at 7,000 feet with this speed. Now, uh, we're not 32 miles yet, so let's wait until we are 32 miles, or 31 miles, and 30 miles, exactly 30 miles. So, uh, we are, instead of 7,000 7, feet, we're at uh, 9,000 feet, so we're 2,000 feet too high. Now, at that moment, you, you need to uh, do something about it, because it will definitely not solve itself, especially not with a bit of tailwind, or even if you have a lot of headwind, at 2,000 feet higher this uh, distance, uh, this will not solve itself. So you need to apply the speed brake. Now, this is not done. So your uh, problems will grow bigger and bigger. As you get closer to the airfield, the workload starts to increase and you have less time to fix the problem. So it's any time you find yourself high on profile, you need to fix the problem earlier rather than later. And also not put a little bit of speed brake, like a quarter, because that will, that will just make it last, make, um, that will just solve the problem uh, in, a, in a longer space of time. Um, you always want to use all the speed brake available, which in the 320 is half speed brake when the autopilot is engaged. Okay, so, um, we are clear to 4,300 feet, approaching Tamla and doing 250 knots. The speed is fine. We cannot go faster, but we need the speed brake. So let's do our next altitude calculation coming up. So let's take 20 miles, so 20 times 3. So we should be at uh, 6,000 feet and minus 2,000 to slow down. So that's 4,000 feet. Uh, you can see already that we are way too high. And then, like I said before, you might even just skip the altitude calc the profile calculation because you know you're high. Now, still the speed brake is not applied. So for a long time, the first officer just sits there. I'm not sure if he's aware that he's high or not, but um, I'm thinking, well, this could be uh, interesting. And I have to have a, a, keep a very good eye on all the parameters to make sure that the aircraft will be able to be uh, do a, a stable approach. Okay, so now, as we approach Tamla here, uh, there's still no speed brake. Speed is still 250, uh, which uh, seems quite of high because if if you intercept the glide slope, you of course you can't be at 250 knots. You should be at least at S speed. Otherwise, it'd be very hard to slow down. So here we're approaching 18 miles now, knowing that at 15 miles you should be at uh, 4,500 feet to be on the glide slope, but that's without the speed um, modification. So 
okay so now the speed is reduced okay um, is there any speed break applied no okay so this could get interesting so here we are approaching we are almost on the glide slope we are approaching our cleared altitude and after that we are already clear for the approach so the, the it looks like we're not above the glide slope so that that's that part is okay now the speed break is applied okay good but it's way too late so let's see what happens next okay so turning final the lock star that's glide slope star good so at least uh, this part is correct so we're not above the glide slope so that we don't have to deal with that problem but uh, let's see okay flap one is selected and now usually what a very common mistake is is that uh, although it's correct to select flap one here to get rid of vls anytime you select uh, the speed brake vls will come up and uh, if you want to slow down you can't have that so okay select flap one fine but uh, w what a common mistake is here is that people uh, they will get rid of the speed brake uh, even if you have uh, flap one selected but you always have to remember anytime you are high on profile you need drag and do not store the speed brake because you need that drag and if that means that you need to put flap one okay so put flap one and the vls will go away but regardless uh, don't store the speed brake but if you'll see here that uh, okay flap one is selected we get still get the speed brake so so far so good but as we are um, okay so now we're on the glide slope and it starts to descend and there you go the speed brake is stowed now that doesn't make sense because even though you're on the glide slope um, and you're not near uh, Vmax still you are too fast so you need to keep that speed brake okay so let's continue now, just to show that usually uh, you you need to be on the glide slope with uh, at least S speed so that you can select flap uh, two. Because if you're faster than that, the aircraft will just sit there. Even th even though uh, you're nicely established on the on, on the glide slope and everything seems to be fine, the the speed will not reduce. It it will reduce, of course, if you put the gear down. Um, but this is not done so far. Now how far can you push it uh, that's uh, 3000 feet above the ground uh, with not too much tailwind if there's a lot of tailwind you might have to lower the gear further so i'm just waiting okay i give him a chance oh yeah so there's uh, he apply speed brake again but that doesn't that's too late he should have never stowed it in the first place so i'm thinking if he doesn't uh, select the gear down by 3000 feet i'm going to tell him to put the gear down because we will not make it in so this is a very important thing to remember if you are on the glide slope or worse above the glide slope and you pass 3000 feet and you cannot select flap 2 you need to lower the gear if you don't you will not make it in so um if i should say passing 3000 feet and you can't select flap 2 then you need to put the gear down okay so we cannot select flap 2 here because we are too fast we are above vfe next and Okay, tell him you need to put the gear down. Okay, so gear down. Now we've got a bunch of drag, and now the speed will start to reduce. Okay, so and then you have to be quick enough to select the next stage of flap. So as soon as it's five or ten knots below VFA next, you need to select the next flap. Okay, and also uh, uh, watch the trend arrow. As soon as the tip of the trend arrow hits the speed bug, the aircraft will start to increase the power, which is not what you want. So next flap, please. Flap two. Oh, here you can slowly start to increase the power now. You don't want that. Oh, no, no. Okay, flap two. Good. So now the thrust goes at idle again. And we're going to wait for a suitable margin below VFE next again to select the next flap stage for flap three. Okay, so now we are far enough below VFE next and we should ask for flap three. Come on, not uh, delay too much. You need a drag. So there's flap three. Good. And again, we're waiting for the next uh, the last flap in this case, flap full, and uh, suitably a uh, large amount of uh, some some amount of um, speed below VFA next, and we ask for flap full. There you go. So now we got gear down, flap full, bunch of drag, a bit of a tailwind, but not too much, and the speed starts uh, continues reducing, and we should be stable at about 1500 feet. It looks like okay that's the end of the video but we anyway will stable at um definitely at a thousand feet and usually about 1500 feet you'll be stable in this configuration good so that was it i hope you learned something and thank you for watching if you like this video please consider buying my book practical descent energy management 
It contains loads of examples of how to manage a descent and approach, and it is the only book available on this subject. There is a paperback and an ebook version available. You can find a link in the description below.